Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Um, bonjour, Francois. Great to see you and have you here. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, the, the magic of the internet. Yes. Yes, you are in, um, you're in Dijon right now, correct? No, no, I am at Chateau de la Tour. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, yes, I'm at Chateau de la Tour um, with a brilliant weather. We had, um, we had just a little, uh, a little cloud. There was a little rain earlier, but uh, we are in the, you know, um, third, this week hot, 32, 33 Celsius. Okay. Dry, perfect. Vineyards, superb conditions. Um, no mildew, no idiom. I mean, nothing. Grapes are growing nicely, and um, and we expect an early an early harvest, an early harvest, uh, probably end of August. Okay. Just like uh, just like the fifteen that we are going to taste and the sixteen also. Okay. Okay. So you think, is there any, is it too early to uh, compare 2020 to some other vintages or do you have a few, uh, a few inclinations there so far? Well, you know, uh, I, I, as always, I am careful, which means that uh, I am not going to bet on, on even, even if uh, constantly for, for now 20 years, we see, uh, we see the weather changing for the for the good of the of, of, of the wine, for the good of the fruits, so for the good of the wines, and we constantly see uh, uh, warmer, warm and dry summers. So I am not afraid of betting uh, favorablement um, on this vintage. Yes, yes. What what will probably make a difference this year is we have a we have a. a, a quite important um, uh, production uh, on, on the vineyards. So um, those who, as usual, will be very attentive to quantity uh, will, will certainly produce better wine than the ones who are less cautious. Sounds good. Well, I know you make great wines every year. We've been doing a lot uh, for many years together and it is, uh, very exciting to have you here, and we are we are closing out our season with you. You are the grand finale to our uh, season of Zoom tastings. We've been doing about uh, 30 or, or so of these. It's been great and exciting. We look forward to freshing up and coming back this fall. But um, let's talk about Chateau de la Tour. I mean, <coughs> excuse me, and it's in the heart of Clos Bougeau, and it's most important domain. I mean, it's, it's the largest... Uh, landowner in the largest uh, Grand Cru, but you're the only chateau or, or domain um, to vinify Joe, is that correct? Yes, in fact, um, when this house was uh, built by my ancestors in uh, 1890, just after the Club Bougeau was divided, you know, uh, until uh, from the beginning, which is 1100 until um, 1889, the Club Joe remained in the hands of the monks of Cito, the Cistercians, wow. okay. who created, who created until the French Revolution. Then it was sold to uh, one person who, whom family kept it until um, 1889, uh, as as a whole. And uh, my ancestors, uh, who were uh, wine merchants in Bone. Um, uh, were used to to buy uh, large quantities of wine, and they bought two two vintages of the Clos in a row, and uh, and the wine was kept at the, at Chateau du Clos Bougeot, which was the the winery of the monks, and then the winery of Monsieur Ouvra, who was the owner. And uh, when the division start, started, um, the the new owner of the chateau asked them to move their wines, so they decided, as they had bought a a, a, a plot of uh, Clos Bougeot, they decided to build a cellar and a winery in, in, inside the walls. And the idea uh, was to keep going on the, the history of the wines, which was production in the Clos Bougeot, winemaking in the Clos Bougeot, aging in the Clos Bougeot, storage in the Clos Bougeot, shipment from the Clos Bougeot, which we do today. So uh, all the wines that are 
ship to uh, our customers for the, uh, I mean, the final customers uh, are leaving the Club of Joe. Uh, I mean, I've not left the Club of Joe until they are shipped. Well, this is the idea. The benefit, a sort of a uh, 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 soil, uh, a soil uh, guarantee. Uh, the wines are kept in the cellar, which is inside, in deeply inside the the, the soil of the Club of Joe. Yeah, and one of the few chateaus in in all of Burgundy. I mean, there aren't uh, that many, right? Yes, true. Uh, Burgundians are much more discreet than Bordelais. <laughs> 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 we don't have, besides the vineyards, we don't have big lawns, big trees, big parks. Everything is dedicated to the to the to the, uh, uh, to, the to the vineyards. So the vineyards come right right at at, at the front of the house. Um, we chateau. They, they, they named it chateau uh, chateau of the tower because when you pass by the Clovejo, um, there's a sort of similarity between Chateau de la Tour and Chateau du Clovejo, which is just behind. Right, right. That's a beautiful uh, property, a great cellar, and uh, an amazing uh, place to taste wines. And, and just the view from that uh, patio uh, you have there is <laughs> spectacular. You know, I enjoy that uh, very much. So one of the great visits in Burgundy, and I highly recommend everybody to visit the uh, when we can visit again, whenever, um, you know, uh, at least uh, the Americans get wel welcomed back to the world, which is not currently at the moment, it seems, but um, uh, That's so why we, they will, that's yes. Right. We're, that's we're, why we, 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 we welcome you uh, <laughs> on the screen, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I, I definitely offer uh, every, uh, every friend who's who has joined this uh, Zoom uh, video uh, to come to Chateau de la Tour. Uh, we, we, we know how to receive and uh, we will receive you with, uh, with great pleasure. Um, wine is, um, is part of our life. I am producing, you are drinking, and, um, and um, we will be happy to, to see you uh, how we produce, uh, organically, biodynamically now, we produce all our, uh, uh, we, we, we harvest all our herbs. Um, we are lucky to have uh, uh, in the family a milk farm in the Jura where we also produce Comté cheese. And uh, you can understand that from there we have the, the horns of the cows and the manure of the cows to produce uh, the famous uh, 500 uh, mixture of, uh, for biodynamic. So um, yes, we we will take time tour in the vineyards, uh, see, understand, touch, feel, which uh, that what comes out from uh, this great uh, climat terroir. It's a it's a great visit, and I highly recommend. Although I'm a little um, I'm a little annoyed. I, I didn't realize you made Comte cheese. You've never offered me your Comte. I don't think I've had it, and uh, I'm kind of I'm a little hurt actually. So um, I cannot wait for your next visit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good, good, good. Well, I mean, I think, you know, your family it has such a great rich history in Burgundy. I think a lot of people don't know that your grandfather was uh, Jean Morin, correct? Yes. And one of the, the original founder of the Confrérie uh, de, de Testavin? Yes. The, yes. The interesting thing about the Confrérie is that it, it, it was created in Nuit Saint-Georges, which is a village. Uh, for, for most of you who have visited Burgundy, you know that Nuit Saint-Georges is, uh, it's, uh, I think, something like 4,000 people only. And uh, at that time, which is uh, just after World War I, uh, as a matter of fact, during, uh, just after the, cri the 29 crisis, Nuit Saint-Georges, which, uh, which was a, a, a very active and very uh, a busy city uh, for for wine, had um, had a lot of um, negotiation houses. Uh, one that remains uh, from those times is Fevelet, of course. But you had Morin, you had L. J. Brooke, you had Chauvenet. You had, I mean, uh, the, the 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 family house of of the Grand Maître, 
de la confrérie, barbier, etc., etc. And those friends uh, who were very close, uh, meeting all, every week together, uh, had this amazing idea to create a, a, a brotherhood to promote the wines that were stored in the cellars and that they couldn't sell because they simply didn't have any customers. Uh, in, in, in 1930, 31, 32. And in fact, they created uh, marketing uh, before the time of marketing. And today, the Confrérie is certainly the better ambassador of the, the region of Burgundy uh, and the better ambassador of the wines of Burgundy, which, which I luckily preside uh, as uh, I am the president of the Burgundy board that um, includes all the producers, all the negociants, all the co-ops. Um, and uh, we are working actively on uh, a cleaner viticulture, more, more organic, more biodynamic, forgetting uh, all herbicides, pesticides, etc., etc., uh, for the good of the fruits, so for the good of the wines. So you're trying to, uh, for the organization, which is a very important one, um, the, 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 it's BIBB, right? The, uh, yes. right. And, um, so you're trying to make everybody in Burgundy go, uh, organic or biodynamic. I mean, is that something you can actually do? Is that, or is that a very difficult, uh, battle? Well, as most as we can, as most as we can, we, 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 we know that there are, there are some places where it is simply not possible because, because, because of this, of the, of the situation of the vineyards. But uh, <clears throat> yes, more and more. And what is interesting is to see the, the, the next generation, the new generation with, with my son, Edouard, uh, leading, uh, leading this uh, and, and pulling, and pulling the, 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 the better estates uh, to a cleaner uh, uh, viticulture. Yes, because obviously uh, we are all concerned with with what we produce, and we know, we know now. With uh, with, uh, for me, it's more than 25 years experience of organic viticulture, and now five years of biodynamic viticulture. We know that the quality of the fruits is, I mean, has no no equivalent. It, we really produce fruits that allow us to make uh, good wines or great wines. Yeah. No, I, I feel like your wines have gotten. Uh greater and greater, you know, as, as time has gone on, they just keep getting better and better with the culmination of now the, the homage of Jean Morin, you know, which mm -hmm. we'll talk about in a little bit, but uh, you're making fantastic wines. And let's get into the, uh, the wines a little bit. I've been sipping on this um, Labbe, uh, Pierre Labbe, which is of course your family name, Francois Labbe, uh, mm -hmm. Merceau Laitier. And I think this is kind of, talk to us about the Labbe, label because uh I, you know people don't associate chateau latour with La Bay. I mean, they're separate domains is is la bay and negocian is it a is it a state bottle talk to us about uh the history about the pierre la bay label okay uh you so you know chateau latour was uh, is a bit uh, bordelais in a way because it it it, it covers only one appellation which is which is club um and this is six, six hectares. My other 10 hectares um, under the same roof uh, are, are uh, farmed, vinified, and, and aged exactly like, like Chateau de la Tour. The only difference is, is the package is the label. The label bears my father's name and the family crest, uh, Raha Abyss, which means rare, rare bird. Uh, yes, here. <laughs> and um, and uh, uh, the, the, the family crest was registered um, uh, in 1652, as a matter of fact. So um, in, here in Burgundy, uh, my, my, my mother's roots, Nuit Saint-Georges, my father's roots, Bone. Uh, my grandfather was mayor of the city. Uh, we, are, we are deeply rooted into, into the city of Bone. And um, uh, we own 100% of the vineyards, okay. um, uh, the Pierre Labbé, uh, Domaine Pierre Labbé vineyards. We do not, we are not negociant and we do not buy one grape or one liter of, of, of must or wine. 
all what we produce comes from our own estates, the estates that we own uh, and that I own uh, personally. Uh, as I said, the viticulture is the same. The winemaking uh, is the same for the reds, which is whole cluster, uh, no no yeast, no, no enzymes, nothing. And now uh, for two years, for the two estates and the two colors, no sulfur, first sulfur at bottling. And uh, we, we end up with wines that potentially could be called vin nature because the level of, of total sulfite is so low that we would enter in the category of vin nature. Wow, is that for this, for this 16 included? Yes, okay. yes. Yes, wow. yes, 16 included. This is a delicious wine. I mean, I'm, I, I mean, it's a great vineyard. I mean, it's just drinking so smooth. So, I mean, a great, you know, uh, glass of white burgundy. I mean, von, von Nature, I usually get nervous about that. And, uh, <laughs> that's why, I don't that's why that we don't say here. <laughs> that's why we don't say it's Von Nature. But the, the, the whites are, are, are uh, <laughs> they are fine, of course, because of course, we, we we don't want to see to have a cloudy a cloudy white. Right. They are fine, but they are not filtered. Uh, we we spend a lot of a lot of time uh, in working manually the the, the 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 wines in the cellar or in the vat, uh, very very carefully. And I much prefer to put out some doubtful uh, end of cuvee rather than putting them in the bottles. Mm. And 16 was not, a, a, it was a great year for the reds, but a little tougher for the whites. And this is quite um, delicious. And, and I know 17 is kind of the great vintage for the whites and, and 18 as well, back to back. So 16s are kind of going to get lost in, in the sauce a little bit amongst collectors. But I mean, this is uh, drinking beautifully. 16, uh, 16 was, was uh, 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 I remember uh, April 5th, uh, where we had this uh, blizzard wind coming from the north, we saw we saw on the weather maps this this dark blue stream coming down, and we had um, we had rain uh, the days before uh, on 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 the small small fruits like this, and and the blizzard grilled. I mean, fr did freeze did freeze all all, all the fruits. We had big, 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 big losses. It was um, it was a, 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 a very low, uh, a very low yield, and um, uh, but what was uh, what was left on the vines gave gave very nice fruit. It's a vintage I, well, I like all vintages, but it's a vintage for which I have a a, a special feeling because it was saved, of course, and. Um, and uh, easy to understand, there was so less, I mean, so little fruits on the vines that the concentration is, is, is enormous. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for example, for, for our uh, 16 reds from Bone and Bone Premier Cru, we, 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 we recently got the, the highest uh, scores from Bourgogne Magazine, you know, which, which is the, uh, the, 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 magazine, the wine magazine based in Bone that publishes only in uh, on burgundy wines right. uh, with with high, i mean high concentration velvety uh, uh, tannins very supple very rich uh, in fact the pin, the pinots that that we like to drink and when it comes to the whites le tilleul uh, means le tilleul you know which is a which is a, a, a tree um, a very smelly tree it's a high um, high block in in the Meursault village at the same uh, height as Puligny. So the wines tend to be more like Puligny, more floral mm. than, than the Meursault from, from right. the lower part, Maybe which right. are a little, steelier, are less, a little less richer. Fat. Yeah, yeah. It's like has this steelier kind of edge and it's not as, as fat as like the, you know, so many Meursauts get. It's got more cut and more kind of this, uh, this long style, which I really like. Beautiful wine. How many different wines do you make under the La Bay label? Uh, I make Bourgogne, Bourgogne Pinot Noir, Bourgogne Chardonnay, uh, Bone Marconnet White, Bone Marconnet Red, Bone Premier Cru, Bone Coucheria Red, Meursault Tillet, uh, 
Jevray Chambertin, uh, Vieille Vie, Old Wives. Okay, nice. Nice range. range. Yeah, nice range, nice range, and nice lines. And Lily, we have a few questions and comments from the crowd here, which might be a good interlude for the moment. We certainly do. <laughs> Uh, and Sebastian. Linden and Tree. Linden. No, sorry. TL is Linden. Yeah. Linden Tree, yeah. yes. Um, so we had one question. First of all, we'll start with why, do, why doesn't Chateau de la Tour have a website? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want a website. I don't want a website. Old school. Old school. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. I don't want a website. <laughs> There is no need of a website. We, 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 we can be approached by email, uh, Instagram. Uh, I mean, but, but website, it's so old fashioned that I don't want one. <laughs> oh, we have another question from Alex, who I guess from his own personal research knew that you were using staves in barrels from Alsace. Do you still do that? And, what is, and why did you decide to make that decision? Bon, okay, that, 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 is, that is one very important thing uh, for, for red wines, that is a very important, very important thing. It, it is, um, it's not only to be uh, well uh, born, uh, it's also important to be well uh, raised. And uh, we all know, we, you, all, all my friends uh, looking at this uh, uh, Zoom uh, video. We all know we have all when we all have tasted wines that have been damaged by by a bad barrel, and um, and uh, this has uh, driven me in um, I mean long time uh, more than ten years to abandon the uh, the traditional coopers to try to find. Um, uh, a source of oak staves, oak staves, um, and um, uh, the idea was to give those staves to a small cooper, this small cooper producing uh, my barrels. So I found the, um, I found the a good origin of staves, and indeed, uh, Alex, Alex has a good memory. Yes, those tapes come from a, a, a specific uh, forest in Alsace. And um, the, the producer of those tapes, so they, they, they are, they are uh, dried for 36 months, you know, um, so, so excellent for, for, for making barrels, told me um, you should try those. They are uh, as soft as uh, toilet paper. So I said, well, I will use them for wine only if you don't mind i trust you and in fact he's right the the staves are the marriage between the the barrels made with those staves and my wines is is excellent the 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 interesting thing is that um the coop my cooper produces build the barrels once the the wines are made he comes to the to the to the house it comes as the two and we taste we taste together the very first cuvee of red, for him to have uh, uh, an idea of the vintage, of the typicity of the vintage, the strengths, the tannins, etc., etc., and he will go back and and build build the barrels, uh, which means uh, uh, longer. I mean, heat, toast, etc., according to the feeling that he has had in tasting the wines. So um, we are, uh, and I have registered this name. We are um, we are oak couture. Et what concerns the barrels? I think I think that I am I am the only one to do to to, to do that. Very special. Um, we have a one more question so far from Farouk, who always asks excellent questions. Um, <laughs> Between the, is there a relation, or can you re explain the relation between Labbé and Deschelet? Deschelet. Ah, oui, very easy, uh, very easy, Falk. Um, my grandfather Jean Morin had two daughters, Jacqueline Labbé, my mother, and I mean Jacqueline Morin, <laughs> born, and Nicole Morin, married to a uh, general uh, Deschelet. So the the estate 
1974 was given to my mother and to my aunt. Uh, that, and uh, I, for me, uh, to, to see my own name on the label is strictly not important. So uh, I have not changed um, the names. I'm looking at the labels. Mise au Chateau, Gilles Abbé and the Chateau Propriétaire. It's, it's, it's perfect for me. Um, in Burgundy, where, where, where the, the, the estates are, are uh, operated um, uh, from generations, uh, we want to keep those estates going to the younger generations, you know, and uh, I am there in between. Uh, I would love that, that my kids uh, continue, uh, which is, seems to be in a good way. Um, and that's it. Uh, there's no way to change. Or oh, same thing. I, Domaine Pierre Labbé, I could have had change when my father died and called it Domaine François Labbé. No, I'm, it's not important. Well, okay. I'll maybe let you get into the reds. Yeah, I think it's time to get in the reds. I mean, this uh, Labbé uh, Merceau is delicious. And I like that your crest is a uh, a rara avi, you know, because as a capon, I'm a rare bird too. So we have something in common there. Your family crest. Uh... I remember, uh, I remember the 200 years uh, party in New York. Yes, you are. You're a rare, a rare bird. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Thank you for having invited yeah. us. It was a, it was a treat. <laughs> yes, that was a great event, and uh, look forward to. Um, the next time we could do something like that. So let's talk about Chateau de la Tour, the, um, the star of Clos-Vougeau, the heart of Clos-Vougeau. And you make three cuvées in Clos-Vougeau, which is a little unusual. I mean, everybody just kind of makes one Clos-Vougeau, but you have three now. So explain the differences between the wines and the thought process behind that. Um, the, the viticulture, is the same, um, the winemaking is the same, the élevage, the aging in barrel is different. So um, when I took over in 1984, uh, which is yesterday, <laughs> and which was uh, uh, to start with uh, a great vintage, 1984, everybody remembers, <clears throat> difficult. Uh, when I started in '84, um, I was helped with 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 the the the, the crew at, at Chateau de la Tour. I was 30 years old uh, and uh, with a little knowledge of viticulture winemaking, but I mean nothing, nothing nothing fantastic. It didn't take me long to uh, see that. In the blocks we had, we had a, 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 a great potential of all the uh, all the uh, old vines and um, we had a block uh, we still have a block that was planted in 1910 so the first replantation after the phylloxera so in 1986 we isolated uh, this block and it was aged separately and we created the cuvée vieille vigne old vines bon. Uh, 75 plus more years, wow. old enough. Yes. Um, in 1987, uh, after uh, uh, Michel Bétan, you know, who's a famous French journalist, yeah, uh, influenced me, um, I s did switch uh, on the winemaking side. I did switch from totally distem to 100% whole cluster. And since then, I have not uh, produced any uh, vintage that is not 100% whole cluster. I am a great, great believer that, especially now, now uh, with the, the, the kind of fruits that we produce, the the winemaking and the reaction of the grapes and the fruits and the stems in the vat uh, with very ripe fruits is 
producing amazing, uh, amazing wines. No doubt, Romane Conti, Leroy, Dujac, etc., etc., whole cluster. So this said, um, in 2010, to celebrate the, the hundreds of anniversary of, of the 1910 block, uh, I had a crazy idea because, as you said, two cuvées, uh, it's, already, it's already not bad. But I like to be more in the details. And um, uh, something came up to my mind very, very simply, looking at a, at a, a vine, at, a, at uh, the, the, the cane, okay, the rootstock, the cane and the first fruit. And logically, the first fruit after the rootstock gets the sap first. So I said, this one is the one who is nourished the best. So um, I knew the reaction of my team, you know, they were saying he's, uh, he's mad, but we, we made it, we made it. And we made, um, we made two barrels uh, harvested by us, by the team, the, the, the ladies in the office, uh, everybody was there with the scissors and uh, carefully we picked one by one those, those beautiful fruits. And the result was, was fantastic. I decided to produce that um, to every year, but to declare it only uh, in the vintage that uh, where, where, where this homage wine is really above the, the BB. So 11 no, 12, 13, 14 no, and since then, yes. So 2020, I don't know yet. But we produce it, and, and in 11 and 14, the, the, the two barrels came back to the, uh, to the Vieille Vigne, to the right. Vigne. Right, right. Well, it's, a, it's an amazing wine. I've had it a few times. I mean, it's super rare. Obviously, only two barrels, 50 cases. But, I mean, it yeah. is uh, one of the great, great wines. And I think the, the critics and the ratings have, uh, have uh, seconded that emotion uh, accordingly. Um, really, it's an amazing thing. And the idea of the lowest hanging fruit and taking that fruit and putting it into a special uh, cuvee is, it's, uh, you know, you, you say mad, but uh, I think most, um, I think mad genius is uh, probably a better way to put it. It was a, uh, a good, uh, it's, a, it's a great wine. It's a very exciting wine. And, uh, you know, um, compared to the Wally level of like similar wines in like a Beau Romanet or a Jeffrey Chamertin that might be, two, three, four times the price, I mean, compared to Clos Bougeau, it, it it's fantastic. I mean, it's a great deal. I think that, uh, you know, uh, definitely um, the wines have changed with, with the millennium, 99, 99, 2000. The Clos is is a cold climat terroir, you know, just in front of the Com La Combe d'Orvaux gets cold from there. And um, since then, uh, with, with, with the, the global warming, with the, the ripe fruits that we, that, that we harvest, we have arrived to, for the better wines, to uh, uh, a combination of uh, the supreme elegance of Le Musigny, which is just above, the finesse of the Echezo on the south side and, and the power of the Grand Echezo on the west side. The Club Bougeau is inside those three Grand Cru, you know. And um, 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 specialists like, like Steve Tanzer, for example, whom everybody knows, compare the better Club Bougeau today, I mean, including mine, of course, to, to, to the better Richbourg, you know, wines from, from the soil, but with, with elegance. I do think that the great Clos Bougeaux like yours are, I mean, really, I mean, it's the largest, I think it, it's kind of a curse and a blessing because it's the largest Grand Cru in Burgundy, you get the largest variation. And, you know, there's some great Clos Bougeaux and then there's some, Okay, Clovujos that kind of, you know, probably affect the perception of the, and, and there's a big difference, right, between the slopes 
and the placement, uh, it's because it's uh, right between the the location of the vineyards in Clovisho. Um, what do you think about that? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say that. Uh, first, I cannot say it because I am the, the president of the owners of Clovisho, so I cannot blame anybody <laughs> situation. No, you know, just think that if the monks some centuries ago made a limit around this block. This, I mean, it's only 50 hectares, you know, as I, as I said to someone uh, the other day, uh, Chateau Moreau, Chateau Lafitte is 100 hectares. It's two times bigger than the whole Club of So it's, it's a small appellation. And, and in Burgundy, Corton is bigger and the Grand Cru of Gevray are bigger in terms yeah. of surface. No, what, ma what makes a difference today is that there are 82 producers of Club Rougeau. So right. where myself as the biggest producer where I can produce 100 barrels, some produce one barrel. Right. So 100 to one. That's why it explained the difference. So I don't mean my, I am making the best wines. No, but what I say to my friends is once you found a good source producing year after year good wines, stay faithful to this source. If you can have a great bottle one year from one producer and then no wine for four or five years and then <laughs> again, the same appellation coming from very young vines, just the one has nothing to see. In with a bigger estate like like six hectare, we are we are always on a constant production. Well, as uh, president of uh, Clos Rougeau and president of the VIBV, I think you should just make an announcement that you're taking all the vineyards of Clos Rougeau back into your custody and just but, make it all because that would be better for the uh, appellation, I think. And and. and no. <laughs> we lost Sorry. no, I, I had a, I had a, no, I, I had a FaceTime call. You are lucky that I, I am not wearing an American passport because I could run for presidency. <laughs> we, hey, you might win if you come over. Come on over. <laughs> I think Francois Lame for president. That could, you know, it's possible. No, 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 because, because my um what what i give from my time and from myself to my friends to my fellow producers is is simply for the good of the region i have i have no political love <laughs> I, I i'm not looking for anything no it's because uh simply uh, uh it's 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 very normal to spend to spend time for 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 the others and um, you know there are people who never open their mouths uh, so I have to be the, the spokesman for, for, for those. Right, right. No, I, I know you're very involved in the community and uh, I'm just joking, of course. And, uh, you know, your family has had a great influence on, on the whole region, you know, for the last century, century plus. Um, so now we have the 16, we have the 16 Labe, now we have the 16 um, Chateau de la Tour. Cool. You have the Classique, I have the VA Vien, you know, so we can kind of, Compare, yeah, with the red, right? I have the VAV with the with the gold. I guess that's the the, the easy way to with, tell. If you see the gold, it's that's VAV. right. And um, and that the that the fifteen uh, the fifteen uh, yeah, I have the fifteen VAV. Some you know, I got lucky. I got double VAV. But the Cuvée Classique, talk about that. Is there a difference between is the VAV richer? Is it aged longer? Do, is the Classique meant to be drunk younger or what? How how would you compare? the two wines to each other? So for, for, for what is the, the, the winemaking and the, the winemaking, same thing. For, for what is the aging, there is 100% new oak in the Vieille Vigne and the Hommage. Uh, there is 50% in the Cuvée Classique. So that, okay. that's the aging difference. Why? Because, and, and we all know that, I mean, everyone who, 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 who's participating know that um, wines from all vines have more concentration than uh, other wines. So um, the Cuvée Classique uh, is, is 
is certainly uh, less con less concentrated than the Vieille Ville, but it's 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 a good example of what a good club show can be. You know, the the the, the VV is is a plus plus, and the homage is a plus plus plus. Okay, um, the 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 QV Classic is um, is what we like um, anytime. Um, I'm just looking at the at this bottle of sixteen. Uh, anytime now, even summer, with with a, a superb beef chop on the barbecue, mm. you know, there's no need to wait for 20 years. The wine will be fantastic in 20 years, right. but what, what we like and what I like personally now today uh, with, with, with red burgundies is that it, they, are, they are mature, they are open after two or three years. Right. Uh, and um, and uh, it's not necessary to wait for winter time. I mean, Puerto Rico, you never have uh, winter, so it's okay. <laughs> uh, it's not necessary to wait for winter time to have to have a, 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 a venison or game or, or, or duck uh, cooked, etc. To appreciate an older an older Burgundy. Well, I think that's the advantage of Burgundy. Uh, exactly, there is a drinkability freshness, yeah. and you can enjoy them at a much younger age. As opposed to Bordeaux, you really need to wait. Even you know, great Syrah, you really need to, to wait a lot of the times with some of the other you know traditionally top red varietals. And you know, Burgundy, like e even the Viavini or the Sixteen, there's a freshness. There's I'm you know, it, it's it's drinkable. Yes, it can age for decades, but I don't feel like oh God, I wish I didn't open this. You know, it's too young. You know, you don't have that problem as much. Not every vintage. Let's say so there are some vintages that do shut down and need a little more time, you know, but with, with Mother Nature, um, you know, being so great. I mean, it's been a golden era for Burgundy, really, these last uh, 20 years. I mean, it, it, it's tough to make bad wine these days uh, now in, in, in Burgundy. I mean, it's really, um, it, it's been a great run. And um, this 16, so we know about, you know, the hail, the frost, I mean, there were, you know, everything except the locusts came in 16. It was about as tough a year to handle in the South, but was it a little different in the Cote de Nuit? Was it a little better uh, overall? What was the difference? Than Cote de Bois. Yeah, yeah. Cote de Nuit was, 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 yes, was better than Cote de Bois. Cote de Bois was really strongly hit. Uh, Gevray, Von Romane was were less, but uh, Clojo, 50% less. We were 50% we down in 16. Mm. Even in Clojo. You know, you know, you, you, you know, John, from 10 uh, up to 16, we had, we had, we had uh, difficult vintages. Mm. We had difficult vintages in terms of quantity. Quality, right. no, but quantity, yes. Yes. Right. Frost, hail, uh, yes. Yeah, it was really tough there. For I mean, there was three out of four years that it was just yes. really bad. I mean, it, do, you, do you guys have like, I mean, well, I guess it varies from winery to winery, but do you have insurance for something like that against the production of uh, the wine, or uh, do, do some uh, people do that? Does that uh, kind of yes. help? Yes, we have uh, we have a, uh, an insurance uh, for hail. Uh, the interesting thing to know is that I'm lo I'm lo I'm looking at the coast uh, from Dijon on to 100 miles going south. We have uh, we have a uh, uh, hail protection. Which that are uh, um, um, with um, uh, guns, cannon guns that 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 um, send send into clouds uh, silver nitrate to uh, avoid the um, uh, cannon. We oui, merci Farouk. <laughs> Can, uh, that avoid uh, cannons that avoid um, the, the 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 ice crystals to amalgamate. And, uh, and it, it, it works pretty well because, um, uh, okay, yes, we have an insurance. So what? <laughs> we lose, and, yeah, and I mean, I mean, we lose the crop, that, and, right, yeah. and and we and we lose the crop next year, or, right. or we diminish the crop next year, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. You know, it's so not it's not it's not like if you if if the hail breaks one of your windows, you replace it. That's it. If, right. If, if the hail hits the vineyard, it, 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 the, the vineyard is, is, is really affected by, by the shock. Yeah. 
Yeah, and of course, with insurance, you never get what you what it's really worth, and uh, there's longer term, uh, you know, uh, repercussions as well. But um, you made a fantastic 16. So the Cuvée Classique, I think you would say, is a wine. Don't hesitate to drink at any age. The VA Vien, I mean, this 16 though, I'm 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 really loving it. I mean, I think. For the price, I mean, this is one of the best values in Grand Cru Burgundy. I mean, it's an amazing wine that delivers incredible, you know, value. It's just, uh, and, and I think the people that know your wine have been drinking this wine, you know, know this. In fact, you did a tasting with uh, Alan Meadows back to 1885 that he said was one of the great, great tastings that he's ever done. Do you still have a few of those old bottles or... Uh, uh, are you are you going to let Edouard do his uh, own tasting back to 1885, uh, <laughs> or or uh, at least maybe he'll be there? You know, uh, when when we we did put this tasting with Alan, uh, you were invited, but you didn't have time, so Sebastian came, well, and you can ask Sebastian. You know, I'm, then, I'm so, not so, sure. so I'm going to have so to no check my email no inbox. No complaint. No, but what, 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 what was amazing about this tasting is that we opened bottles that I, I, I never had a chance to taste before. And, um, and, and of course, knowing that the, the, the 1900 wines were, were pre-phylloxera, we, we, we had, uh, we had um, uh, the, 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 this, this, we had this touch that, and I mean, the touch in the wines where, where uh, everyone said, wow, uh, oh, prefiloxera wines, oh, fantastic, amazing, the silkiness, etc. The, no, what was, what, was, what was really interesting was to see the, 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 consist the consistence, consistency uh, from 2010, where we started down to 1885. We didn't taste every vintage. We, we cherry, I cherry picked some. Um, in every decade, and um, even 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 uh, eighty seven, that was my first uh, whole, whole cluster uh, winemaking, and um, uh, of course you know the forty five twenty nine etc. Were, were 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 just fantastic. But the 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 the, the, the pre phylloxera wines were just a treat. Uh, you 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 have the experience, John. So. Uh, you, you, you know what I mean when, when you taste something and, and, and there's so much emotion in tasting old wines because uh, 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 a wine is the only living product that can last so long. And, um, and when you taste a wine which is a hundred years, you, you put in your mouth something that was touched by somebody who's, who's dead for, for a long, long time. And you... you you, 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 you drink the history of the vintage, you drink yeah. the history uh, of the moment, the, the history of the region at that time. For me, there's a, there really, really is a lot of emotion. When I, when I drink, um, I, 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 I had a chance to taste a, a 45 not too long ago, and um, 45, uh, Chateau de Latour, nine hectoliters, so much hail, nine hectoliters per hectare. So, it's very, 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 very small crop, and um, and that was a vict the victory year, 1945. You know, so you drink a wine which is the wine of the end of Second World War, and you drink and and you put inside yourself this product that was made. I mean, for me, it's a incredible. So it's a full of emotion. And there's very few producers in Burgundy that can say, hey, I, I have wine from 1945 or I have wine that goes back that old. I mean, you can count them on probably two hands uh, that have uh, this kind of history, as does Chateau de la Tour, which is a testament to you and your family. That's right. That's right. Re remember, remember that uh, until uh, probably uh, 1985, uh, the, 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 the kings of, of, of Burgundy were the negociant, not, 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 not the estate. Not the, the, yeah. m most, of the, most of the producers were selling their wine in bulk yeah. to the negos. And um, thanks to some uh, top personalities, including Robert Parker, um, uh, the, 
the, the, the, the, the producer's wines became more and more popular, which is a good thing. Which is, and today, of course, uh, uh, the, the estate wines are, are, are really uh, on top. I think you're the only Burgundian I've ever heard uh, say something nice about Robert Parker. I, 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 I recognize the truth. <laughs> I, I have always said that. I have always said that. And I have nothing to say against Robert Parker uh, and Burgundy. You know, uh, he, he said himself that it, the Burgundy was were not his street, period. That's it, you know. No, but it, um, we, we can... I shocked some of my friends here when I said that we could erect a statue to Robert Parker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did a lot for the wine industry, although not as much uh, for Burgundy as the other regions, but that was good for a lot of collectors for an extra 10 or 20 years, perhaps. Uh, so many uh, people who were drinking the wines then are very uh, grateful for that. Um, so we have 16 and 15. Uh, how do you compare 15 to 16? 15, the, the grand brother of 16. The, le, le, older brother, like a, like a, a wait, wait, big... older, older brother who, who, who pays attention to all the, all the kids. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, uh, um, since, since 99, probably besides O4, uh, due to hail, due to hail, uh, end of August. But besides so far, um, all vintages are good in Burgundy. So, right. All vin all vintages. Some are great, um, and and diff and very different. Five, which which is still uh, still to be stored. Right. Ten, right. ten gorgeous. Fifteen is is a, is another one. Fifteen is a vintage of memory. Uh, we used to say uh, the vintages in nine are great, but you know, um, 19, 1915 was, was was an amazing vintage also. <laughs> so hundred years after, we have uh, we did reciprocate. I mean, the fifteen has so much richness. I mean, it's really, I mean, and it's a rich wine. It doesn't have the approachability of sixteen. No. I think the sixteen is much more drinkable today than the fifteen, which is a rich, dense, heavy, almost a little too young. And you know, you know, for us, uh, it, 15 is really the, the very, very first early uh, crop. 13 October, October 5th. Okay. 14 September 22nd. I'm talking for uh, my estate. Right, for harvest, yeah. Uh, for harvest. We oui, harvest. Uh, 15, September 1. Mm, big jump. One, and, and interesting. One, two, three. We, we, we uh, picked the uh, Chardonnay. And normally, we start with the whites. And then on, depending on the ripeness of, the, of every block, we cherry pick the ones that we are going to, um, to, 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 to visit. For the reds, and uh, the, 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 this is where the, the difference between enology and uh, real winemaking comes. All the enological parameters for the Pinot Noir were okay. Sugar, acids, pH. I mean, total acid, tartaric, etc., etc. Which means that reading this sheet, say to the team go but uh, I, I had some doubts early early September the, the the berries the berries were beautiful but they were the skin was hard and the inside uh, was in pulp so I decided to keep my picking team not working for eight days after eight days, and it, it's interesting to see the transformation of the fruit, the skins became softer and the inside became liquid. So we started then and we had the opportunity to make, make this great vintage. 
because because of this um, delay. Right. It feels like a, a fifty to a hundred year wine. I mean, it feel, the, the the density and the concentration. I mean, is is impressive. I mean, it's it, it's an impressive wine. Do you feel like global warming? So now you're harvesting earlier. Is is now you're harvesting closer to September one than October one? Is that a new trend over the last? since 15 or is it varying? Uh, well, yes, it's, it's, it's becoming earlier and earlier, but uh, I never, I, you know, I was, talking about, I was talking about 13. It's a vintage that I, I like very, very much when it comes to my wines, to my red wines. It's a, it's a late vintage October. And um, I never forget that 78, which is one of the greatest, was, 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 was made in October also. So, um, you know, uh, there, there are wines for uh, everyone's taste, if I can say. Uh, there are wines that, uh, I mean, vintage that I prefer to, 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 to others. Like, for example, I love 12. My tw I love my 12. Um, uh, but uh, yes, we are going... We are seems like we are we are we are, we are uh, earlier and earlier. Right. This this year is going to be early. Right. This year this year we are day by day uh, in the vineyard at the same time as fifteen. So it's it's really end of August, early September. Okay. All right. Now you're also um, I know you're busy in in, in Burgundy, but you're also doing. Uh, some new projects uh, around the world. You have um, doing something in, in, in California uh, with uh, Terlato, right? Yes. Is that coming yes, out? Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. We, um, uh, we are lucky to have uh, uh, the Terlato family as, uh, as a distributor in, in the country. And um, the interesting thing about Terlato is that they are not only wine importers or distributors, but they also uh, own, own estates. They own estates in California uh, and in other, in other places. And um, uh, when I visited uh, so, a few years ago, the, the, the beautiful estate of Sanford in the Santa Rita Hills, yeah. I fell in love with the place first. Um, and I said to John Tarnato, I said, John, you have, uh, have non-grafted Vineyards, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay planted in 1970. What a, what, it's a dream. I mean, for what, for for a vigneron, it's a dream. Non-grafted vineyards, 50 years old. Um, I would love to try to do something with you. Uh, we would pay. I mean, give advices to about the viticulture, wine making, like in like in Burgundy. So our first vintage is uh, 18. It was uh, bottled uh, not too long ago with, uh, with our barrels. <laughs> the, the Cooper didn't taste the vintage, <laughs> but we, we, I found some similarity with our wine. So, so, so we, sent, we, sent the, um, we sent the barrels um, uh, for, red, for red and wine. And we produced not we didn't produce much. We produced approximately 3,500 bottles of Pinot and 2,500 bottles of Chardonnay. But um, I fell in love with this uh, with this wine, and um, it's it's um, um, you know California state with a, with with a bargain and heart now. I'd, no similarity with with Burgundy wines, of course not. Uh, but I said to John, we have a challenge is to produce the best Pinot Noir in California. Right, right. So, so in California, I, I, like, I like the domestic, I mean, it's funny because a lot of the Burgundian producers have gone to Oregon, but, you know, I, I drink a lot of California Pinot Noirs just for everyday drinking, just like they're juicy, delicious, great drinkable wines. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to age them. Some age very well, actually. I mean, some of the great old Chalones, and the Caleras and some of these great ones, which are all really Central Coast Monterey region. So you're in the right region. They age very well, but I mean, there are there are they make delicious expressions of uh, Pinot Noir for sure. 
What is interesting there is that uh, there are only, almost only Pinot Noir and Chardonnay in the Santa Rita Hills uh, for good reasons. You know, the guys who planted the vineyards, uh, if, if Cabernet Melo, Syrah or, or any, any other grapes would have grown better, they would have planted. But the, 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 I met with the, the gentleman who, who created the estate, Michael Benedict, and uh, who explained to me why he chose this specific place uh, with, with a geological map and, and, and some, uh, uh, some uh, research on the soil, etc. And um, uh, from, our, from our, what I have tasted in the estates around, uh, I was convinced that, that, that the, the ability of making great, great wines uh, was there. For me, more, more than Oregon. Oregon, volcanic, so, volcanic soils, acidic soils, acidic soils and Pinot Noir. Climate probably good, but Santa Rita, open on the, on the ocean, cold. Uh, the good thing about California uh, is that um, you know, irrigation is, is, is possible just to play with the ripeness. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that we are going to produce something, something great there. Yes. Mm, exciting, looking forward to that first uh, release. Please uh, let us know, we'd love to try we just it. We just sent the, the labels today because we produce the labels in Nuit Saint-Georges. The labels of the wine are printed in Nuit Saint-Georges. So they have been sent today to the winery. You don't trust the American printers to make a quality uh, label? Well, um, when it comes to the price, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And, and you forget another region where, where, where we make wine. It's in Corsica. I was going to say, we you make, also make wine you know, in Corsica. Like a vacation. So when you take a vacation, you just need to do something. You're like, I, I need to make wine. I'm on vacation. I have to uh, make some wine. I can't just uh, relax. I guess you, you're a workaholic. That's right. There is not only rosé wine in summer. There is also light, right? So we produce a light Pinot Noir, 12%. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, I replied to Farouk on the uh, east coast of, of the island. Um, we farm the wines, uh, we produce the wine there, and the wines are brought to Burgundy for bottling um, uh, and shipping. Transport, you move, you move the barrels, you ship the no, barrels? No, 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 tanker. No, no, tanker. We, we, we're tanker, yeah. Oh, wow. Road okay. tanker. We bring, we, bring, we bring the wine up to Burgundy. You sell that in, in the U.S. or is that just kind of a, a local? Tell, tell, tell that to sell it to the U.S., but we have a worldwide, worldwide distribution. We even sell it in, in, in New Zealand, in, 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 in wow. Australia, in Japan very well, with, uh, with uh, F wine in Hong Kong, Vietnam, Brazil. I mean, we have a wow. worldwide no, distribution. I've never, you know, I never knew this until today. And how come that, I mean, Sebastian keeps all the, because all the drinkable wines for himself, like the, the good deals and the good values, he doesn't tell Because me. it is so cheap that <laughs> you cannot be interested in. Oh, come on. I, you know, I'm an everyday wine drinker. I drink, you know, I, I can get down there. I can get down there. And only 11.5% alcohol. I don't mind that. I, I could just drink two bottles. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's a it's a project that uh, I want to try have, it. Uh, I need two bottles. Try, send them to me. <laughs> we'll, we'll get them. We'll get some. I want to try that. It's interesting. We, we, like it's, it's more exciting sometimes to try something like that. That's like wow. It's just something new, different. It's 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 very uh, exciting. And you, and you know the 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 the, the, the those two wines, the, the California wines and the Corsican wines, are, are, are Pinot Noir uh, produced by Burgundians outside of Burgundy. They are not. The idea is that they are not clones of Burgundies. We bring our uh, experience of the viticulture and the winemaking. That's it. In respect to the locals, if I can say, which means that. Okay, probably in California, we will need uh, 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 less new wood for, for the new, 
for the for for for, for, for the new coming uh, uh, harvest, etc. We 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 learn, you know, we learn. And um, and uh, but we brought we brought uh, the, the you know the no sulfite. Uh, zero sulfide at harvest, uh, no fining, no filtration, etc., etc. I, 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 I compare very often uh, 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 the fact of making uh, great wines like making grand cuisine. You know, you, you, you go to Georges Blanc, uh, um, he, he will reopen in September because he's missing your clientele at the moment. You go to Georges Blanc and you ask for a poulard à la crème, chicken and cream. You eat that and you say, wow, fantastic. When I'm going home, I'm going to make, cook the same. So you go buy the chicken, the cream, etc. You cook it, you say, oh, it's not, the same. it's not the same. What happened? What happened that the cream is a special... Uh, triple, triple, triple cream from a little producer there, that the chicken is a free-run chicken uh, just outside of his door, etc. Et Same thing for us. We know the quality of our fruits. We know the quality of our fruits. The quality of our fruit is, is fantastic now. It's 90% of what is in the glass. The 10 other percent is our way of making wine. Easy. I hear though, if, if you massage your cows, Francois, the cream, it becomes richer and better. So, you know, you have to get somebody to like, give them a little, you know, massage. And, John, uh, John, John, to milk a cow, it's not a massage that they need. <laughs> yeah, but I, I was talking about the shoulders. <laughs> Just like this. <laughs> Well, it's been amazing to have you here, Francois. It's been so great. I think, um, Lily, do you have one more question from the crowd before we uh, say goodbye? I, I do have, have plenty th question left. I have plenty of time. Um, and I will say that, John, I've already, someone has already reached out to me about getting you the Corsican wine, so fret not about that. Okay. <laughs> um, we had one question about your approach to biodynamic farming and your decisions about whole cluster fermentation. And I know you, I think you mentioned that 1987 was the first year that you did all whole cluster. And why did you decide to do that then? And how do you feel that biodynamics has changed how the whole cluster experience is and the, and the taste of the wine? Well, it, I, 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 I changed because I, I, I tasted what was produced elsewhere, you know, uh, and I saw that Farouk wrote uh, a question Jean -Pierre, about Jean-Pierre Confuron. Uh, to answer Farouk, Jean-Pierre, why I work with Jean-Pierre uh, as, as, as an advisor uh, uh, at, the, at, the, at the beginning. Uh, and, and it's in tasting his father's wine, uh, Jacques Confuron and other Bon Robinet producers, um, traditional producers that the light, the light just came out. I said, this is what I want to make. How do you make that? Whole cluster, uh, cold, cold maceration, slow fermentation, punching, etc. And um, the, the, but I, I, am, I am a man of challenge and, uh, and uh, in 87, I, I didn't do a trial. I did 100% straight and it went well and so you stuck with it yes 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 whatever, it, was, whatever it, was, it was not the easiest vintage to to, oh. to start with this but uh you know uh, in those days uh if you remember the the the, the 80 the decade of 1980 85 possibly 88 89 but i mean uh, 81, 82, uh, 83, a lot of rot, 84, oh, very, very difficult, etc., etc. Nowadays, every vintage is, uh, uh, seems to be nice. Much easier. Yes. Right. Thank you so much, Francois. John? Yes, whatever you're doing, Francois, you're doing it right. Uh, based on uh, what's in the, the, my three glasses today, always a pleasure to see you. You are a gentleman and a pleasure to, uh, to share wine with and um, one of the great producers in Burgundy. 
the heart of Claude Bougeau, the greatest producer in the Appalachian. And we thank you for your time and we thank you for your company. You know, the, the, um, it, I cannot wait to, 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 to come and see you uh, all, wherever you are. Uh, and I cannot wait for you to come to see us. So it's, a, it's an invitation, of course. Um, Can you send me your jet to uh, Puerto Rico? Just come send it to me and I'll, I'll be there. My, my jet can take off from uh, Nuit Saint Georges airfield, but cannot arrive. My jet, if I had one, if I had one, if I had one. But you can, I mean, why don't you ask your friends of Von Romani to take the helicopter and, and, and come and pick you? I, I, have, I, have no I have no jet. I have no plane, no jet. No, uh, it's an invitation. It's an invitation, of course, because. Uh, one who has not walked in the vineyard, who has not smelled, uh, touched, seen this, those gorgeous vineyards cannot understand. Yeah. And, um, and we will take all the time necessary uh, to, to, to receive you. Voilà. So it's a global invitation. Yes. How many are you behind? Right. Two, we, 2, we need a global jet for your global invitation. <laughs> <laughs> well, the 380, the 380 is not flying anymore, sir. Bon. John, merci. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. A bientôt. Thank you, everyone. Have a great summer. We love you all. We'll, we'll see you in the fall. We'll do some more of these uh, soon. Thank you very much.